Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to interpret the regression coefficient estimates of a level-level regression. Suppose we have the following model and we wish to interpret the results. So we were saying that wage here is our, um, is our dependent variable, um, and we're going to have education, experience, and age as our um, independent variables, our explanatory variables. So now suppose you know we've gathered our data and we've run our regression and we get the following results. Uh, note that you know these results are pretty clearly completely made up, so don't take them at their face value. Um, this kind of result right here is the typical kind of output that you'll get from an R software regression, uh, and then kind of putting them closer into terms of the model, uh, we get the following. So our beta one coefficient, the coefficient in front of education, we have is uh, 1,025. Our uh, beta 2 coefficient we have as uh, 560, and then our age coefficient estimate we have uh, 235, and then our intercept here is 5000. So how do we uh, interpret these level level regression results? Well, there's a few things we got to start off with just off the bat. So first off, we have to assume that uh, you know our gas. Gauss Markov assumptions hold. Um, you know these are a list of assumptions. For example, you know I think the first assumption is that this is actually the true model. Uh, several other assumptions that allow us to interpret the results. Uh, if these don't hold, we might not be able to interpret the results as we're going to. Um, the Gauss Markov assumptions do allow for some flexibility. Um, so, for example, if we're just trying to do kind of a rough approximation, it might be re it might be reasonable to relax the assumptions a bit. But for for now, let's just assume that our Gauss Markov Gauss Markov assumptions completely hold. Uh, second off, let's assume that uh, our coefficient estimates are statistically significant and practically significant. Um, so once again, these are completely made up numbers, but the, given the made up numbers, these are statistically significant. You can see our t values are fairly large and our p values are close to zero. Uh, and then also they need to be practically significant, right? Um, just because you have a coefficient result um, that could be shown to be statistically significant if the, this estimate here is, say, close to zero or otherwise meaningless given the typical underlying variation of a population, then it's not practically significant and we can kind of, you know, you know move on. Um, and then lastly, when we uh, estimate any any particular coefficient, so say this coefficient or this one, you know, beta 1 or beta 2, we need to assume that we're holding the other uh, variables constant. Okay, so given those kind of pretty strict assumptions, what does something, something like beta 1 here uh, mean? Well, to show to the fact that to take our original model, uh, or a version of our original model, and take the partial derivative of the independent variable uh, with respect to the first dependent variable. So I'll do that right now. So, you know, just kind of remember back to calculus. We have a model like this. We have y is equal to that intercept plus some, some number times x1 plus some constant number times x2 plus some constant number times x3. If we wanted to find the effect on y of a of a change in x1, what we do is we take the first derivative of this equation with respect to x1. So that's going to be our partial derivative with respect to x1. And what we find is that um, the change in y over the change in x1 is going to be equal to our beta 1 coefficient. What that means is, you know, uh, if we were to change uh, this by um, if we were to change this equation right here by x1, uh, what do we expect that to change? How do we expect that to change y? So if we were to change this equation right here by one unit of x1, we'd expect y to change by beta 1. So if we increase um, this model by x1, then y is going to go up by beta 1. Now applying that to our model, uh, you know, with uh, wage here as a function of education, experience, and age, we get the following. Um, we expect um, if education was increased by a single year, we expect wages to go up by $1,025. So it's the um, effect on this variable of a one unit change in this variable. So beta one here is if you change this education by one, you expect wages to go up by beta one, in this example, 1,025. So beta 1 here, if you change education by 1, we expect wages to change by beta 1. So if we increase education by 1, wages will increase by 1,025. 
Cool. Hopefully that's helpful. If you did find it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll be sure to put uh, uh, links in the description um, to more econometrics resources. Okay. Thanks. Bye.